All right, so what we're trying to do in this lab, we try to understand the um, interference. And uh, when it comes to the uh, wave interference, you know, we can see a fringe pattern, right? So we discuss in class that uh, very in detail. To the fringe pattern. So we need very small slit. Right, extremely small slit. The slit width should be about like, um, should be on the order of micrometer, right? Maybe like 10 micrometer. Read. So the S1, slit number one, S2, slit number two. And then let's say this is the midpoint exactly, okay? Should draw it exactly on the middle. So that's the midline, and then we're going to have a screen right here. So the, let's say screen separation is large D, and the slit separation is a small D. And then if you have a light comes from this side, so usually we call them plane waves. The reason if you are light wave, light source is actually either very far away from the, the slits, then when the light rays come on this point, then you can observe those waves are very linear at that region, okay? So that called the plane wave. So the, when, the, when the plane wave come and hit here, so the slit one and slit two act like a secondary uh, sources. So the if we consider the Huygens principle, then we understood that it's gonna emit secondary waves. As a result, you will get different places on this screen, different brightness. Right, so that we call the fringe pattern. And then, if you uh, take a look, the what we observing. So we observing the very bright spot right here that we call the central fringe in equal zero. And then after that, you will observe this first one, second one, third one, and then so on. Right. So that's going to be the same for upward direction. First one, second one, third one, fourth one, and then so on. So the we we tested this with the double slit and the single slit, and then you know technically the intensity of this this pattern. Even though this is a double slit experiment, you can see intensity is decreasing, right? This intensity we understood that in theory, this intensity should be remaining constant for the double slit experiment. But we see that huge intensity decrement. You can see intensity is actually rapidly decreasing. On both sides, you can see because this is symmetric, right? Same for the both sides. So that intensity decrement is actually because of the diffraction envelope, okay? So the, we try to study this uh, intensity pattern and then we try to understand that the general relationship which we got in our theory class. So we understood that if I, let's say, for example, if I want to understand what's going on exactly on this particular location, this angle is going to be theta. And then if you draw another line right here to the other wave, then this is 90 degree. This should be the path length. And then path length, we can find D sine theta. And then we know now path length D sine theta can be n lambda or either it can be n plus half the lambda, right? If it is n lambda, that means lambda, lambda, two, two lambda, three lambda, and then so on, then you will get a bright spot. Generally, we call maximum point, intensity maximum point. In plus half the lambda, you will get a minimum point, right? The dark spot. So this is what actually we try to understand uh, in today's experiment and the validity of that equation. And if I change one variable, what happening to the other variable? And then by knowing certain parameters, geometric parameters, we can estimate the lambda or the wavelength of the incoming light. So that's the plan for the experiment, okay? And on the other hand, by geometry, we can uh, we can have another relationship for the theta. Tan theta is equal y divided by L uh, or D. So the L is actually separation. I think we use the letter L for the separation between the screen and the slit in, in this experiment. I think I use D in my letters here. Doesn't matter, it's the same idea, okay? That large D is the separation between the slit and the screen, okay? And the theta is very small because this uh, this small D, 
which is a very small number uh, value compared to the L. L is generally on the order of meters, like 0.5 meters or 0.7 meters, and then so on. And then D is on the order of like close to the micrometer one, right? Because of that particular scenario, we can say angle is extremely small. So which means the sine theta approximately you can equal to tan theta approximately equal to theta. If you do that, then you know this relationship is valid. This we use in class uh, various times now. So this is going to be n lambda divided by d. And from there, I can find the relationship uh, accordingly. What I want to change y is equal n lambda d lambda large d divided by small d. Now, this is, all these are directly measurable, right? So I can measure y if I know the pattern on the screen. Uh, I can measure d if I have the double slit item. I can manually measure that. And the large d separation between the screen and the slit, we can measure, right? So which means technically if I want to, for example, find the lambda, then I can find easily by measuring y and then d and the small d. So that's a very simple experiment. All we have to do is actually set up this apparatus and then let the monochromatic wave hit the, the slits. And then we're going to observe the pattern. And then we just need to measure the certain parameters, geometric parameters uh, from the experiment. And then that's all by doing that we can find the lambda. But however, in the experiment, instead of calculating it once, we can actually uh, do repeat the experiment by changing one variable and then find the data set and then do the same calculation by using graphical. Okay. So in, um, in, in first we can vary different things. Okay, we can either move the the screen, so which means we can change this large D and then see how the position is changing by keeping everything else, which means if I take this formula, then you can say we're interested to find the lambda, but we can change this large D, right? So the Y is equal in lambda divided by small D times the large D. Let's say I'm interested measuring only on the first order fringe pattern, the dark fringe pattern, the first order only which means the n equal one fringe that position from the center, right? So which means when n equal one, y is equal just simply lambda over d, lambda over small d times the large d. So if I can make a graph by varying large d, this we put it into x-axis and then this will put it into y-axis, then this will be the slope of the graph, right? So which means I can do a data set instead of doing one calculation and then calculate the wavelength by using the graphical method too, okay? So the y-x is gonna be now lambda. It should be lambda. So this, uh, this is the same y, okay? So this is actually y we measuring y v measuring and then this is the y axis okay don't mix that up so this is y that is measured position of the n equal one fringe and then this is going to be large d d separation between the slit and the screen and then you will get a graph and then graph is linear we can find the slope of the graph that slope is equal lambda divided by d from there you can find lambda which is d times slope of the graph Okay, so that's a very simple uh, way of analyzing the wavelength of the light. So the, we can do this for different colors because we can have different color laser lights. If you're doing this in class, we can do at least for two different color. But since it is a simulator, we have actually more freedom of doing with different colors. So we'll repeat it like for at least three different colors and then uh, i think in the simulator we can select more than three then at the end we will try the other colors at least one time we don't need to repeat the same graph again and again because it's the same kind of calculation and also at the end we can check uh, not only this way i can do this experiment many different ways right because you have freedom of changing different parameters now why is the position of the fringe which is equal n lambda large d over d 
Now in this experiment, what we really doing is the D, right? First part, we changing the D. And then if I change the D, then you can see Y should be changing, right? So the position of the fringe also changing accordingly, right? Those are our parameters, variables in this case, right? D is independent variable, we changing ourselves. So the Y will change accordingly. So I can, instead of changing D, I can, if I want, I can change the small D. I can change the select separation, right? If I do that, Y gonna be equal N lambda large D times one over D. So I can do this experiment another way if I want to. This is our Y axis. We'll put this into X axis. Then this whole part gonna be the slope of the graph. Then we can find again a graph that graph gonna be one over D versus Y, the position of the uh, fringe. So the slope of the graph in this case, which is equal lambda times D, we'll assume we interested only first uh, fringe on our fringe pattern. So we can calculate again lambda by using that lambda is gonna be equal slope divided by the large. So there's various way of doing this experiment. First we'll try by varying the the separation between the slits and the screen. Then at the end, we'll try by varying the slit separation itself, double slit separation itself, and then analyze the wavelength because wavelength is a known parameter depending on the color. Uh, because of that, we can compare that. By comparing, we can actually validate this whole theory, what we're studying here. So the, we, we understood this double slit experiment is actually the, the key to understand the wave nature of light. So that whole theory we can validate uh, by analyzing and comparing the wave. Okay. All right, question. Okay, then let me start. So the simulator link you can find on page number three. That's the same simulator which I used few times in the uh, lecture class to discuss this particular experiment, right? If you click on that, you will see four different options. Out of that four, we need actually the third one. That is the double slit experiment, okay? When you click on that third one, then you can see different, uh, different options. Right now you can see it is only one slit and also you can see on your right hand side, there are different options. On the very top, you will see, I think I mistakenly closed that window. Let me open that again. Okay, let me open that window again, okay. Okay, so let us go back to the simulator. So we were talking about simulator properties, right? So we need the third one, option slits. And then right now you see one slit. I can change the slit size. You can see right here, it says one slit. If I click and drag this one, I can change the size of the slits, right? And also if I use this icon right here, down arrow and then click the double slit, then I have two slit experiment, then I can change actually the slit separation, right? See that? So I can do the experiment different ways I like, uh, according to our need. And then uh, on the very top, you will see a couple of other options. You can measure intensity, and the wave we can measure and then uh, do different measurement for the wave. For example, wavelength, period, things like that, we can understand easily. And there's a timer, we don't need that. And then there's a scale measurement here. We can measure distances, the tape. 
and also there below that you can see frequency selector amplitude and then below that you can see three different options right now it actually using the water wave generator here on the far left side and then if you go into the middle one you have a sound generator there and then if you go into the last one then you have the light okay we interested actually light waves right so the click on the light as soon as you click that then you will see on the top frequency selector so the rainbow colors appear we can select different colors according to our our wish but first we'll try to go with the green color placing somewhere exactly in the middle of the green okay because each color has a range of wavelength little bit like dark and then mid portion and the lighter portion of that color okay green has very larger variation there so place it somewhere exactly in the middle so we'll start with that and then later we'll change that color into blue and then red and then at the end we can check even other colors like in between green and blue like the light blue for example or, or violet and we can go maybe lighter red like orange or maybe dark red and then we can uh, do the experiment accordingly and uh, any question all right then let's continue and also this uh, below that uh, select selection tool the mid portion you can see a graph right here you can click on that and also the screen so that is screen will show you the uh, fringe pattern okay now if i click this light right here you can see now plane wave generated from there so that plane wave means waves are like the linear right now it's a single slit right you can see the the pattern is not really much visible but if i change the slit size you can see whether you can get a fringe pattern from that single slit experiment or not you're going to try to do the double slit experiment let's take a look the single slit how it behave now that's a single slit now you can see the mid middle one is the very brightest one you can see it but the beyond that it's very difficult to see it actually producing the diffraction pattern but it's very difficult to do uh, that experiment so that's why the diffraction intensity varies very rapidly from middle one the central one to the next one so it's very difficult to observe the fringe pattern this way so we need like circular the aperture then it can be visible so that's why we're going to do here actually the double slit experiment okay so let's do double slit experiment you can select the two slits and i have to adjust a little bit slit width maybe let's go into the smallest value 200 nanometers and the slit separation you can see i can start from 400 I can go all the way to the 3200, but if your slit separation is much larger, I can get actually a large amount of fringes there, right? You can see now many, many lines there. Now, the one of the problem is actually when we're measuring now, what we're interested to measure is by varies by varying the either slit separation or by varying either separation of the screen and the slits the position of the fringe or the selected fringe right so in this case uh, we can when we measure him we have to measure position of the fringe exactly middle of the fringe right because this each line is you can see bright line is thicker like about maybe one millimeter or couple of millimeters thicker so i have to measure exactly to the midpoint from this horizontal white dash line right here that's the central line from that central line for example to the next one is the n equal one right here to the mid of that so it's i, I can do this easily by bringing this ruler the this tape meter right here and then i can estimate that around here should be the center so i can measure it to like about 465.8 nanometers right but that's not going to be very accurate because i don't know exactly what the midpoint is 
So we can do it easily. If you click on this intensity icon right here, then you can see instead of that color, I can actually go with the intensity, right? You can see when the intensity is maximized, that's the exact midpoint. So instead of rely on that colors, that's how we have to measure if this is an in-class experiment. We can't really be, see this intensity uh, graph, okay? But since this is visible on, on this one, we can actually, if we want to, we can measure with this one. So we'll try with both, okay? First, we'll try one calculation without the graph to check the accuracy. And if accuracy is better, then we can just do with the intensity pattern right here. We don't need the graph. But the accuracy is too bad with this measurement, direct measurement from the screen, then we can check that with the uh, intensity graph too, okay? So that's uh, one thing we can check it out quickly if the numbers are not adding up. Friction. Okay, so we can do uh, initial part. We interested to change the separation between the screen and the slit, right? So that is actually now, this is the screen right here. We are the fringe pattern you observe. I'm gonna get rid of the intensity graph. This is the fringe pattern. And then this is where the slit are, right? So I have to change the separation between them. You can see this green arrow on the bottom of the slits right here. If I click and drag, you can see I can change the position of this, the slit, right? So which means right now the slits are much further away from the screen. If I go this side, slit gonna be much closer to the screen, right? So depending on that, you can see the fringe pattern is very, very different, right? Completely different. Now it's a different type, but if I'm here, let's wait a few seconds. Now it's very different fringe pattern, right? So that's the idea. So we we interested to tracking the first order fringe. That means the first one. This is the middle one. This is the first one. So that's our plan. So the slit separation, maybe we can start with some low value. Let's try with the 400 first to see how the fringe pattern look like. I difficult to identify the first one or the second one, right? So let's try with about 1,000 nanometers. We need to see at least first order fringe, otherwise we can't do, right? So that also difficult, central one is visible, but the first one is much further away. You can see it here at the very edge. It's difficult to measure there, okay? So let increase this little bit more, maybe to like 1,500 to see what will happen. Okay, now you can see the central one and the first order fringe on the top, bright one, and the first order fringe on the bottom, the first bright one, right? So that's good enough because the first part, what we try to, what we interested is to see what happened if I change the separation with the separation, what happened to this fringe, right? That's our uh, major interest. So now what you have to do, uh, if you bring this screen closer, let's bring it closer somewhere here and then see what happened to that fringe. If you remember where it was earlier, now you can see it's on the different location now, not in the previous location. Let us bring this much closer. Now it's much different. So that's what we needed, okay? So we need first order bright line is actually changes as a function of position of this screen, right? So that's what we interested. Now we see this uh, number is gonna be, uh, gonna be much better because we are keep tracking the first bright fringe as a function of position of the, or the separation between the slit and the screen. Now you can see this is where the first one, right? First bright fringe, let's measure somewhere to the middle of that. So that's where it is. Now keep track, I will change this into thousand location. Before we start the experiment, we need to make sure we have enough data range to measure, okay? 
Now you can see it's changes, right? Midpoint is somewhere here now. It's not the previous point. Let's do 1500 point right here. Yeah, it's changing now. You can see it's shrinking, right? Because why it is shrinking, if you go back to the formula, so this is how those two actually correlate. Uh, now what we're changing is the We change in the slip separation as a result of slip separation. We like we would like to see what happening to the fringe location. Okay, so these two are actually correlate to each other. Lambda uh, y and the large d. So that's what we actually observing. So if we get correlation, then I think we are fine. We can take the uh, we can take the uh, data from there because when I bringing this closer and closer, what I do in, I change in the separation into a smaller values, right? So which means that makes sense. If I changing this D into a smaller, smaller values, this Y should be becomes more and more smaller. That's what exactly you're observing. So we are, we are good. Uh, we have good numbers or the good observation here to take the data. Let's uh, make it more smaller. Yep, it's shrinking much. So that's gonna be actually good starting point yeah that's better any question so we keep tracking only the first order okay this first one you can see it started here this was where i in the beginning and then now this is where it is that's about the midpoint now right so that's actually what we need to measure so i will bring this much into this line then i can identify what the midpoint is exactly so there will be a little bit of observational error there. That's totally fine, I think. Uh, then we need, I think, at least about like five or six different locations because we are planning on making a graph too. Okay. Question. All right. So the one other thing is that now I want to understand the wavelength of this wave real wavelength of the wave right so that number is not directly given there but the wavelength you can actually measure here right you can see this when i click this arrow and then bringing it there's a graph right here right electric field graph right here so i can actually measure the wavelength directly by using that graph if you pause this then i need to measure the wavelength from this point to this point right if I can measure that, that will be the way direct observed wavelength. But that also difficult to measure directly by using the graph axis here because the numbers are too far away and the grid doesn't have the smaller values, right? So that also I can measure by using this one. So I want to measure, for example, very top right here, crest to crest, right? If I measure this point to that point, so I have one wavelength. So I can measure that exactly it is 541.1 nanometers. Now that will be the direct observed wavelength. And then we can compare that wavelength with our calculated wavelength by using the experimental result. So those are the little bit of differences because those things we can't do if it is a in-class setting. Uh, we don't have exactly this setup, but we have a setup to observe this diffraction pattern. And then we can see that pattern, this pattern right here on this screen. We can do this measurement exactly how far away the selected fringe from the central axis and then so on. But we can't really do this kind of measurement, okay? And uh, those are gonna be depending on given wavelength directly on our laser line. So that's the plan. Any question? Let's align this one exactly with this uh, horizontal Y line uh, because then we know there will not be any error when I click this drag upward because if it is slightly tilted, I'm adding the error, right? I have to go exactly on Y axis, so it's better to align this with this Y, uh, with this white color line on the screen, okay? The screen edge. And then the starting point should be exactly on the horizontal color dot this one and then that's it then we'll start measuring so we can also measure if i want the timer right here like if i let it go we can measure how much time for one particular wave 
and then by using the time and the speed of the light we can actually calculate the wavelength that's another way of doing it but we don't need to do that i think we can directly measure here by using the uh, tape tape here okay measuring tape let us run this one and we'll start from this point 500 point i need about six data point one two three four five six yeah i can get six data point very easily or we can start at thousand then we can go all the way to four thousand let us check how better that data is it doesn't matter i think we can start either 500 or thousand i think we have measurable data range all the way to four thousand yeah that's the difference is about this much so that very good measurable range we'll start from there any question all right so we'll keep the slit with about 200 nano that's mean about like 0.2 micro right because nano is 10 to the negative 9 and if i get rid of 10 to the negative 3 from here it's going to be 0.2 times 10 to the negative 6 right and the slip separation, uh, 1500 nano. So that's mean about like 1.5 micro. So the, that's the about the size of the slit and the slit separation. Then we can see nice uh, observed pattern like this one. Okay, so let it start then. Any question? All right, first part. So we interested to check how the Y changes position of the first fringe pattern. Okay, first order fringe changes as a function of D. Let's record these values because we need those things for the calculation, right? Slip separation D, that is about 200 nano. So which means you can write 2.00 multiplied by 10 to the power negative nine meters okay and the wave length we have to measure it right so the wave length you can measure by using this tape so let's estimate the wave length so if you want to do it we can go slow-mo mode and then you can or you can or we can just stop that completely Okay, pause it and then we'll measure the wavelength. Wavelength going to be from one crest point to the crest point, one maximum intensity point to the other maximum intensity point, right? Complete cycle. How far we travel within the complete, the one period of cycle, right? So it's going to be this point to the next point. You can click these orange points and then drag anywhere. You can see. And the one point going to be fixed. Other point you can drag. This should be exactly to the midpoint. It's about 583.1 nanometers. Let's check it here too. Before it hit, it's about slightly different answer actually. We should get before it hit right here because you can see after it hit here, uh, it actually slightly changes the wavelength. Now that's very unlikely why it produced like that way, but we will measure before it hit right here, the real wavelength on, of incoming wave. So that looks about 535.6 nanometer. Okay. So let's take a look whether there's any discrepancy with that. With our calculated value, we can check that out later. So we can say 535.6. And nano means 10 to the power minus 9. And that's about right because that should be in between 400 and 700, right? That's about right for the green. And then let's measure now length from this point center point exactly central line to the first bright fringe 
but midpoint of that i remember now earlier i mentioned you that now this uh, the intensity this fringe is very thicker right so i have to measure exactly where the intensity is maximized on that thick region so you can identify that if you put the the intensity click here then you can see where that midpoint is okay do not measure the with the graph intensity graph because it's not really anything meaningful the reason we can't really see that graph if this is a real experiment right we will not be able to see that. so because of that i think we will use it to really briefly identify that point but we'll not measure from this one okay. all right so we are interested in the first fringe n equal one this is n equal zero so we need y and then we need the slip separation slip, uh, separation between the slits and the screen. So slits is on thousand nanometer point. This is on nanometer, okay, position. This is on 5,000 nanometer point. So which means the separation between that is 4,000 nanometers, okay. So D, let's use meter unit. Unit meters, wavelength lambda, the Y is unit of meters, position of the first bright fringe, uh, calculated wavelength is unit meters, and then let's compare those two wavelengths, expected one or measured one directly, and the calculated one, right? So this is gonna be then 4,000 uh, 4, nano, so we can maybe get rid of 10 to the negative nine into here, that may be easy way when we're recording this one. I can put 10 to the power minus nine into here. Then I can record this one. D is now about 4,000. Because it's 4,000 nano, nano is 10 to the negative nine. Since it is a common parameter, I add in, uh, in to, on top of this table, okay? That makes our calculation is easier. Because we know final answer also we expecting in the same nanometers that mean 10 to the negative nine gonna be common on there too. Okay? Position, we measuring that is 15, 26 nanometers, right? Position of the first bright fringe. So that also in nano, we can get rid of the nano that is 10 to the negative nine again into here. Then it's easy when we do the calculation. We just need to record that number, right? 15, 26, dot zero. Okay. And then let's check a quick uh, calculation and then see what we get. So the lambda, we can calculate from here. Lambda, which is equal y times is small d, divide by the large d, n equal one, right? First order fringe is only one we we investigating here. So let's do a quick calculation. Lambda d over d, uh, the y d over d, okay? That's the lambda. So equal sign y times d y times is small d over large d. Okay. Equal sign y times the small d, which is we recorded earlier about like two times ten to the negative nine. Two times ten to the negative nine. Two divide by large d large d is 4000 so 10 to the negative 9 from y and the large d cancels out i will get another 10 to the negative 9 from the two okay see how we how we do that calculation you have to be careful right so i have 4000 from here and 15 26 from here y calculated is actually in terms of equation that gonna be lambda calculation from the equation y d divide by the large d, okay? But pay attention to the uh, units, how we do that, right? So the y has a 10 to the negative nine, d has a 10 to the negative nine, and then this is small d has a 10 to the negative nine, okay? All of those has those numbers. The small d is actually 200. I missed that one here. This should be 200 dot zero. Okay, now that's why. But it's still number is very off. Let us take a look why. 
C9, that is Y. 15 26 that looks fine and then times the small d that is about 200 nano that also makes sense and then divide by b9 b9 is the large d large d is about 4000 nano but our error going to be fairly high so that will be a problem actually because I have the nano is still here, that's fine. But it's still that number is uh, considerably off than what we expecting. We expecting about like 5.6, 10 to the minus nine, but we're not getting that. Mm, that will be a problem. Let me take a look. Ah, okay. So I know what happened. So this la this is small d is actually sits separation, right? So that's not what I recorded here. That's one reason. So that should be about 1500. So let's check with that. Yep, so we good now. So we're gonna get a little bit of error. That's totally fine because if you do this experiment in class setting, we're gonna get large error, okay? So the according to our the the double slit experiment, the small d is, is actually slit separation, not the slit to width. Okay, be careful with that. When I recorded here slit separation, mistakenly I put the number of it, the number for the slit width. If you do that, you will get huge error here. Okay, so we expecting about like 535 nanometers, 10 to the negative nine. I keep the 10 to the negative nine uh, fix here. So we're getting about 572 nanometers. That's reasonable in, in terms of real experiment. If we do this in class, we get fairly uh, considerable error for this kind of experiment, okay? Unless we have a very, very good setup to do. So question. Compare the two in ABS, we expecting about 535. That also, let us uh, quickly do one quick check. So let's measure it on this region. So that's not really uh, normal why the simulator does that. It has a one wavelength on this side before it hit this double slit. And then you can see wavelength is slightly changes other side of the slit. Uh, that very unlikely why it does that. This side is 535, but this side is about slightly larger than 535. You can see it's about, it's about right, but if I bring this little bit away, it's going to be slightly larger than the 535. You need to check that between two nearest press point, okay? Like maybe a couple of them to see exactly it is the same or, or not, okay? So it's, it's about right, I think. Maybe I can measure it to five. I can measure actually into 576 too because these are in nanometers. You can see even the very slight change is actually uh, do a lot of effect in this one. Okay, when I'm measuring here, this side is not the same as this side. Let's measure on this side. So that very unlikely why that happens, but it seems to be something there. Question. Okay, so then let's continue. So which number we're gonna measure? We'll, uh, take it out one more time on before it hit the, because I would like to actually measure from this side before it hit the double slit, then it actually more makes sense. But due to some reason, when I'm measuring here, I'm getting a little bit different number than the other side. That's what I'm checking, okay? Let's see why that. If I measure this side, that's gonna be about like 535. If I measure here, it's not gonna be exactly that. One reason maybe actually this is more, uh, more, more intense, this side, before it hit the slit right here. 
and then that intensity is decreasing here you can see a lot of large curvature there because of that maybe that's why i can read that into 576 but i think we should measure from this side you know that more accurate right because that is a real wavelength come from the source so we should not change that at all let's read that from there okay question we're going to get a little bit of error there that's okay i think so which means the wavelength known i'm going to use that same number 535.6 so let's do the abs to see how much the error is expected i'm going to keep the 10 to the negative 9 which cancel out right so this is going to be 535.6 minus calculated and then divide by 535.6 multiply by 100 about six percentage error not bad at all compared to like a real experiment if you do we're not going to get that much closer okay if i do measure the other side i can even reduce that error but we should not do that because we need the real wave come from the real wave will come from the source okay question and then that's it then you continue then all i have to do is increase the separation uh, decrease the separation between the slit and the screen and then redo the experiment which means let's bring this into about like 1500 location i'm going to use this front edge with the dotted line with the exact position right here always front edge i'm using okay play button again wait until the pattern appear and then bring the tape here and then align the tape with the exactly this point right here with the vertical white line. Now let's measure all the way to the midpoint right here, mid midpoint. Okay, but do not use this uh, graph, intensity graph, because that's not practically possible to have. But we can measure actually by looking at the width of that right fringe, midpoint of that. Okay. So let us assume that's the midpoint. It fairly good match with this line right here. So I think we're going to have a little bit of error there. That's okay. Our rest is very simple, right? So now I'm on, in terms of separation, 5,000 minus uh, 1,500. That means 3,500, right? Nano, I can keep it 10 to the negative 9 on the top. And the Y position now, 1277.4. 77.4 and then these two you can click and drag right that's the advantage now it's better my percentage error is much lower and also in terms of significant figures i can't really report more than one decimal place right so that's not really anything meaningful i think we should reformat this whole table uh, into one decimal place okay highlight this whole area right click format cells and then one decimal place because you can see the tape is allow us to measure only one decimal place accuracy in nano right these are nanometer values so the accuracy is anyway very high okay correction and then that's it technically you're just gonna continue this uh, let's Click this and then drag into 2000 location. Then the separation going to be 3000 nanometers. And now you can see the midpoint right here changes, right? We have to look at it as big as possible to make the screen, uh, this simulator part, larger as much as possible on your screen. Then look at it. Otherwise, you're not going to see that. This is the earliest position, right? That is not exactly now the midpoint is right here. So I have to click this and then drag to align with the midpoint new around there maybe. There are going to be a little bit of error. That's okay. Uh, 14, 1148.5. Uh, 1148.5. And in these two, you can just click and drag. That will do the calculation for us. That's good. Uh, the error is about the same on the range of about like seven uh, percentage. Error. 
And then that's it. It's a very simple uh, experiment. You just click and drag the position of the slits. As you click and drag the position of the slit, I could actually do even in between by estimating. So, but we'll go with this round values. Okay. Right now, the midpoint right here, we, we keep tracking the n equal one. Okay. So, let Click and drag this into the midpoint right here. Now 924.8. Now the separation is about 2500. And the Y1 is actually 940.924.8. And then let's click and drag this to. Yeah. So we are the, on the same uh, error margin. Okay. That's good. Let's click and drag the position into next. Yep, now you can see the first order is changing, right? It's shrinking down. So that may be now around here. So 748.6. Separation is about 2000 nano now. 748.6. And uh, we good. Okay, so let's continue. We need maybe like two more data points, then we can make the graph. Print mau. Now it's around there. Six o six dot one. Separation is now just fifteen hundred nano. And the position of the first fringe is 606.1, 606.1. And that little bit higher error there reason probably my midpoint right here, which I estimating may not be exactly. That's okay. Just leave it like that. If you're doing in, in real experiment, there's no way to know that, right? So it is a little bit higher error there. That's okay. Because now fringes are now getting closer and closer. You can see it's very difficult to identify that, right? So now the next data point right around here, maybe 437.1. Now the separation is about just 1000 nano, 437.1, 437.1. So the error is actually very high now. That's okay. So those two last data points seems to be a little bit of higher. Okay, question. Let's try with 402.7, this one, if I a little bit change that to see. Yeah, so that means we need to uh, trial and error may not be a very good idea, but uh, you can just check whether you are on exactly midpoint of this fringe, this color, the green bright region right here, the first one or not. If, because these measurements are now very sensitive, right? So it's on the, the 500 level of nanometers, even, the, even you change a very little, it changes so much in terms of numbers, okay? that affected too much, you can see I changed that only little. So this error is actually reduced much. Okay. That about 10 percentage error, just fine, just leave it. But if it is more than 15 or so, I think you should recheck that to see whether uh, you can identify the midpoint of that particular fringe. Okay, question. And that's it. Then uh, we can try the uh, graph, right? So you know earlier we discussed that I can make a graph. So the y, the position of the first fringe versus the separation from the fringe, uh, from the slit and the screen. And then by using that graph, I can re-estimate the lambda. Let's make a graph. And also you may need a screenshot of this one, right? For the whole simulator. That is screenshot, you can leave it here somewhere that should go to the procedure section. So let's add the screenshot. That generally should go to the procedure section. Okay. This part. 
right so you can leave it there but it should go into procedures okay, this is now figure one this is simulator for double slit experiment okay question let's make a graph then so let's add the graph here insert charts is scatter plot always right so let's add the graph here double click select data let's add data add uh, x value should be now according to our equation earlier x value should be large d right y values should be the y the position right so the x value should be large d delete anything on the x position here large d is the number we change ourselves that's a separation between the split on the screen and the y values is actually our measured values right here how the position of the first fringe changes according to the position and the separation of the slits and the screen okay you can see it's a nice linear graph click ok click ok again it's nice linear one or two dots you can see deviating those are the error high points which we observed earlier that's okay so i need the chart title chart title i can say this is y position uh, we can say position of first fringe versus screen separation screen distance or green light you have to specify what exactly doing we, we doing here so then double click and then chart elements we can add axis horizontal axis vertical and also you may need the uh, trend line linear right in this case because we are expecting to fit this data and uh, do x axis title x axis title is a screen separation screen distance unit in meters and the y position first fringe position a unit in meters and let's double click on the trend line right here bring the cursor on top of that double click and the last icon right here on the very top and then click on the last three options right here right hand side selection tool then you will see the equation that equation the slope value is the one we need to do the rest of the calculation right so that we can use to calculate the wavelength again any questions so far we can say this is then figure two this is going to be then fringe position versus screen distance for green light all right so let's do a little bit of more calculation by using the graph and the calculated values so since we have a, a couple of different numbers i'm going to use a meter here and then let's keep 10 to the negative 9 as a common parameter right because that is common for all so we can leave it as it is right and add that into maybe around here 10 to the power minus 9 then that will leave it as a common parameter let's take the average equal sign av average command and then average of calculated wavelength we have a six or seven data points we can take the average of that 574 expected value is about 535.6 now that also not the we don't know what is real uh, number is that number is the one we actually measured okay you can see the each color can have actually range of values right? it's a green color 
we can't say green color has exactly this wavelength because depending on the uh, depending on the color you can see it has actually range of wavelength right if you look at it here it can go between the certain uh, maximum and minimum point right so that's the number we measured directly so let's use that okay question Okay, then the PE, let's calculate with that, ABS, parentheses, expected 535.6, or what we measured directly, 535.6, minus calculated average, divide by expected 535.6, multiply by 100. About 7% error, not bad. And then let's do from the graph, then you know if you look at the graph, Slope of the graph is actually ratio of the y and d, uh, lambda and d. Lambda is the wavelength of this color, and the d is the slit separation. Okay? So by using that, we can re-estimate that slope multiplied by slit separation should give us the number we wanted here. That's a wavelength. Okay? Equals line. Slope is the number in front of the x, 0.3772. Point three seven seven two multiply by slit separation is the small d we recorded earlier here. That is about 1500 nano. 1500 because nano is the common parameter, we keeping it on the top. So 565.8. So that number is much better compared to the previous value because that will give you the, the kind of average behavior anyway with the all the data. Okay, question. All right, so now what we're gonna do, uh, Now let me copy paste that to formulas right here. Formula for the graph is just this one. Let's say this is wavelength. I'm gonna use just lambda here, okay? Lambda from the graph. And this is the lambda average. And G. And also this is for the PE. So all of these commands you have to add into the appendix C, okay? Or you can add just under each table. Since we're doing directly with the Excel, you can add all of those functions under each table. That should be fine, PE. Okay, so those are the, the functions we use for this table. Question. Okay, then let us continue. Let's continue to different color and then at least let's try with two different colors, okay, before we go into the next section. Uh, the, you can pick any colors, uh, doesn't matter, but let's pick two different colors, maybe green and red, uh, the blue and red, we've done the green, let's, we can try with the blue and then we can try with the red. A mid portion exactly middle of that red portion and then later without graph we'll check with the other colors also okay because there are various colors we can select but at least a couple of other colors let's check okay so let's do next one Okay, so we'll go into the next one. We'll do that with the blue color. 
right so always try to observe this as large as possible on the screen then you can see all these numbers clearly any small mistake gonna be a huge error so about like mid mid of the blue not really closer to the violet or not closer to the green it's gonna be the light blue then let's try exactly midpoint right here like we done earlier we would like to make the measurements uh, before it hit the slits right you see earlier when it hit the slit after that the it's difficult to measure wavelength directly it's slightly different before it hitting that is not the case it should be about the same but if you look at the wave you can see the the right here it's showing you after it hit like it hit in the barrier so the intensity is actually decreases right because of that that peak is actually becomes much wider so when i measure from there i can have a lot of error so let's do it before it hit so that means it should go from this point there will be a little bit of error that's okay and all the way to there about like 440.6 so if you go towards the blue and then violet that is the high energy range of the visible spectrum so the high energy range mean frequency must be higher wavelength should be lower right that exactly what we're observing so about 440.6 so let's record expected value of the known value as 440.6 nano 10 to the power minus 9 meters and we need the slit width, uh, the slit separation. Let's keep it the same slit separation like we did earlier that we don't need to change about 1500 nano. Into the power minus nine. And then technically the method is same. We're gonna change the separation between the slit and the screen and then see what gonna be happening to the first fringe. So they equal one fringe. You can measure that on the the below the negative side of the the central fringe or the positive side doesn't matter. That positive negative sign is not our interest at all. So we just need to figure out or measure how much that changes. Okay, that's all. Any question? Okay, then let's continue. Again, it's the same uh, kind of calculation. So the D is going to be, I can just copy paste. All of these going to be exactly the same. So I'm going to copy paste that into this one. That makes it easier. This table, very first column, very first row going to be exactly the same and also the d these values we can keep the same you can do different numbers if you want to doesn't matter we can leave it as it is we'll start at 4000 position but that that number is not the 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 position number right here not the important one but the important is actually the difference so a position right here says the thousand but i need the separation from the screen to the position right here it's four thousand okay those are the numbers we recorded earlier. We'll use exactly the same. And that's all. Then we'll continue and then see what will happen to the first fringe. Now, first fringe is on around this point. Let's align this one with the vertical, this white line. Now, the first fringe maximum point somewhere around here bring it here and then take a look actually you can see how much error can happen when when we measure even the slightest change when you click and drag it's going to be a large error because we are in like thousands of uh, values here right if you if i get rid of the nanometer units you can see what i'm measuring is about like 1259 so that 1259 and then slightest change when you're clicking and, and then try to stop that at that point there that is small change going to be very large number here that's why we actually going to see a little bit of high error there okay but that's that's totally okay that's what we usually do in if it is in class setting and also this the green you can see it's it's difficult to see with the black right 
So we have to measure this exactly the midpoint. The, the blue region right here is difficult to see with the black. You can see it's, this is the end point, this is the starting point, and then this may be around the midpoint. So that should be good. About 1245.2. Question. And the calculation is exactly the same function. There's no difference at all. If you want to do it easier, if you copy paste these two shells right here, highlight it from the first table, and then copy paste into this one, it will automatically do the calculation because we we use the cell numbers, cell names to do the calculation. It will uh, readjust everything. Okay. Let us copy paste this function too. You can see I copy paste from the previous table, but it does what I wanted to do automatically. Lambda cal, we can say, and the PE for this one. Question. Okay, that's the two function we need. So we are on around like 12% error, that's okay. All right, let's continue this. Okay, so let's change this one slowly into next point, 1500. And then let's see what will happen. Okay, then you measure exactly the midpoint as accurate as possible. So the midpoint here. Unlike the green one, it's difficult to see now because this is dark blue and then background is black. It's not really visible, but maybe it's around here. So that's 1058.8. Might get in a little bit of larger error, 1058.8. So let's see how much the error is. About 15, <clears throat> that little bit of high error. That's okay. So we're going to have seven data points. Let's see how it changes. Friction. Okay, then let's continue. Let's bring this to the next point. Okay, let's measure separation between the central and the first maximum point around here, See around 900. One. And also the decimal places, I can't go, I should not have more than one decimal place. Uh, I think that we should uh, reformat this area into this part particularly to one decimal place. Okay, whole table you can reformat to show only one decimal place. And likewise, just continue this one. I have a little bit of higher error, more than 10. One of the reason is that it's very difficult to see that, that region, the whole blue region, because the background is black. So the earlier we got like the error is around like seven or less. That's okay. Now let's continue. 2500 point. And the maximum of first range position 720.7. We can drag this part. It is too high, actually. No, oh, that's which we don't like to have that much error, but I think. Oh, we are measuring a little bit to the lower side, probably. That's why. Let's try. Let's check one data point with 755. You can see smallest, slightest change 
you click and drag on the tape, number is changing like about 50, right? So that's a problem. So that's why actually you, you're getting a little bit of error there. Yeah, so the number should be around like 750, 55. Maybe we're getting the fairly decent number there. Yeah, like the error margin to the same, anything changed, they are actually giving us huge error, but I'm gonna keep it as it is with the higher error. That's okay, that's what we're observing. We don't need to go and try do the trial and error to get the and trial and error to do the error margin lower. Instead, we're doing the couple of different numbers. Let's see what will happen to the next one and then so on. 3000 position and the difference between the slit position and the screen going to be now 2000 nano. Oh, the error right here going to be, let's measure it here. Around 630.8. With that, 630.8. Now that error is better. Because I earlier measure that position by, by bringing this into here, right? If you want to really do correctly, we can measure here, right? See that? that's exactly the right number now when i do that measurement here maximum to maximum point i have to estimate that by looking at the fringe right when i looking at the fringe and then try to estimate to the midpoint of the fringe that can have a lot of error because a small variation of that tape like half a millimeter length difference in our real observable length, length scale is about like about 50 nanometer scale in the simulator. So that error is so high. But that's okay, that's uh, how it's set up. We should not try to do it opposite way. Okay, so now this is around the midpoint of the first fringe, about 451.4. Try to measure it as accurate as possible yourself. So they always, I'm getting here my error margin between 12 and 15, except this one point. And the last data point. Yeah, that's correct, actually. Yeah, if I use the same wavelength like I did for the table one, you write, I think, because I copy paste the command, but I did not change the wavelength, right? Yeah, okay, that's why. That's why the error is around 15. Let's change that because now the wavelength is lower. Yep. Let's try 404.6. Still not really much. Uh, still the same, about the same, nothing much actually. Let me quickly check this wavelength again. About 447.7 roughly. Each time you measure that number will be slightly different. 447.7. Okay, let's try with that number. 447.7 and then this number should be, yeah, I, did, I forgot to edit that actually. 447.7, yeah, that's actually the reason, yeah. So the error is very, very less actually, that's better. So even better than the previous one. Okay, so that's good, good point. Because I copy paste the function, you have to be that, that we have to be careful, right? Because if I copy paste the function from previous, some of the points are automatically adjusting, but not every point, right? Especially the PE, it's not automatically adjusting, I have to correct it. 
okay now actually we are good so we are in really good error margin very very low so the last data point so which means it's not bad actually measuring this way estimating that midpoint we could uh, get all the way down to like less than 0.5 error margin that's a very good uh, error level so this is about 340.9 340.9, so that error is slightly higher. Let's check. It's not the right place, actually, right? That's okay. That's the last data point. It's slightly off than what we expecting. Slightly lower than what we expecting. Five three forty point nine. Yeah, that's a number I can get. That's okay. Just leave it like that. So let's do the graph correction. Okay, to make the graph, it's the same graph, right? So I'm not going to make the whole graph from the beginning. Instead, you can copy this graph, the previous graph, and then make a copy and then paste here. Make a copy of that. And then we just need to edit the data, right? That makes a little bit easier in terms of editing. Uh, and also the figure name. This is going to be figure three. Only thing is changing now. This is actually for blue light. Okay, so that makes much much easier now i just need to do the editing of the data right instead of uh, table one data here i need to select the data from table three double click select data then you will see series one click edit and then you will see the previous data you have to delete that and then select the y from the new table so the y from the d Cell values B31 to B37. Then delete everything on Y position. And then select the Y from C31 to C37 on table number three. Then you have the right data, but we need to get. Okay? The data looks, the graph looks very similar. There's no difference at all because we using the same concept, same principle. Only difference is that we're using the different color. Okay, correction. All right, so let's, it's the same uh, estimation here, the error analysis. We can use, uh, still we can keep the 10 to the power negative nine separated, right? So the calculated average equal average command, Calculated average from the table three now, uh, D31 to D37, close brackets. And uh, from the graph, from the graph 0 0.3048. So we know from the graph value, we already discussed that earlier, D times the slope of the graph. D is about 1500, we keep in the same number, right? 1500 multiplied by 0 0.3048 equal 0 0.3048 multiplied by 1500. It's about, about the same. These two numbers are the one you need to check. Those two numbers should be about the same. Then we find, okay. So the, in terms of function, it also the same. This is lambda cal abg. And then this one gonna be lambda from the graph. Lambda from the graph. Okay. 
and then let's do the PE ABS parentheses expected value for this one is about 447.7 and then minus cal average divide by cal average uh, expected 447.7 multiply by 100 and then click and drag so the average value and the the number from the graph is actually very good so only one data point i have here a little bit of value that last data point other than that this data is actually much better than even the previous one and let me copy paste this command for the pe okay we have all the information here now all right question okay so let's take a quick break and then we'll continue we'll uh, we'll we'll do a detailed analysis like this one for one other color and then the rest is the rest of them is actually just direct calculation for different colors and the very last part let's do by varying the slit separation okay let's take a look instead of separating the screen we will fix the screen and then separate the slit itself see whether we can get the lambda correctly by doing that way okay all right so let's take a quick break question all right so um what we done we done two different colors right green and blue let's try with one other color in detail and then let's uh, do the rest of the colors only one calculation okay. so let's do the red color so the somewhere in the middle of the red because it can go all the way to right here orange light red and then all the way to other side where it dark and then let's go in between and uh, we would like to measure wavelength of the wave first right so let us estimate that so that we are the main error happening because when we do that estimation any small slight it's different is actually huge error creating the huge error in our next calculation but that's what it is so that's okay 654.6 So the known value, let's do that number 654.6 into the power minus nine meters and the slip separation, let's keep it same 1500 nano. Okay, and the, the units are same on the table. First row, I'm gonna just use the same numbers there and also the numbers for the d slips and the screen separation going to be about the same numbers we can use so we'll use about the same numbers okay any question and then let us start again the slits uh, to the screen separation is about 4000 value right right there then after the fringe pattern appear we would measure to the maximum point right here now that's very wider so yeah we're going to be a little bit higher on there probably that's okay let's try that it's very difficult to estimate exactly the maximum point maybe around right here right so it's about 1873.2 1873.2 and then why uh, lambda calculated you can bring the two functions which you use earlier but you have to edit it accordingly okay so it's the same kind of function in terms of function i can use the same 
but I have to edit particularly for PE. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention, actually we're doing PE, okay? You can see on this last column, it's a PD. You need to edit that term, okay? Because we're not doing PD, we're doing actually percentage error, not the percentage different. So make sure you edit that. And this one right here, expected value is not this number, right? So let's change that 654.6. So about 10, per, uh, not 10 really, I should change this one to 654.6, about 7 percentage. That's normal because the last one we got actually very good value and the previous one was around that range, our data. So that makes sense. Okay, good question. Okay, then let's continue. So it's the same uh, technique, same process. So all that we have to do, change the location of the screen position and then observe the pattern and then find the first bright fringe and then measure the separation from the central middle to the first bright fringe middle of that, okay? Midpoint of that, maybe around here. Yep, that's about 1714.5, 1714.5. And then let's check what are the numbers we're getting. So about right 12 percentage error, the number is about 734. Question. And then you continue, likewise, it's the same uh, process, right? So bring the position right here into 2000 position. Then make the fringe pattern appear and then measure to the maximum of the first bright fringe. It's about 1376.2. 1376.2. About 5 percentage error. Let's bring the position to 2500 location. And see the fringe pattern getting shrink now, right? So the maximum point of the first bright fringe around there. 1196.8, around 9 percentage error, <clears throat> 3000 location, the split location, 3000 position, minimum is around right there, maybe 975.9. In the screen and the slits are about 1500. Right there, maybe 713.6. Nine percentage error, not bad. Then let's do one data point more 4000 position on the slit. Maximum first right fringe around maybe here. 527 527.4. 527.4. Aha, uh -huh, that's very large error. So that we need to take a look again. About 20, that seems to be too much, right? So let's take a look why. Yeah, that's not the right point maybe. And they did a little bit, uh, recheck a little bit again. Your 20 percentage is too high, right? So let's check it out again. Let's try with 
hi you can compare with the maximum two point here get some idea maybe let's try with 534 still too high i can't really get good number there so due to some reason maybe that one is fine anything like that number is too off little bit but that's okay I check like three times. I always getting around like 17, 20, 28 percentage error. So I'm going to leave it like that. That's okay. Quick step. Okay, then let's uh, make the graph. Uh, the graph also will do the same trick we done earlier, not meaningful uh, doing the graph from the beginning. We can make the copy of that graph and then just edit the data right that may be easier to do that way make the copy of that graph and the figure name also the same so i can use the same figure name and then edit that that may be easier to do this up to you okay it's not required to do that exactly the do whatever you prefer the more Right now, this one is actually for the red light, red color. And let's edit the data, double click, select data on right hand type, site top, series one, click edit, delete everything on the X, then go to table number five, and then column B, 53 to 59 is the X. Delete everything on Y, column table number 5, column C, 53 to 59. Click OK, click OK again. All right, correction. And also, I forgot to mention earlier, every graph, this inside this table has a, the topic too, right? So the graph on top of that, that title also you have to edit because the every graph is not for green color the second one is actually for blue and the third one is actually for red right you have to edit those accordingly and now it's good so we can do the table number five um, table number six actually question Table number six, table length again, measured in unit meters. We can keep 10 to the power minus nine common. Let's do the average equal average. Average of D cell 53 to 59. Let's do PE. Lambda L A V T P E equals sign A V G parentheses for this case expected value is six fifty four dot six right six fifty four dot six minus cal average C sixty six divided by six fifty four dot six multiplied by 100 That's a typo in the equation. Let's take a look what the typo is. Of the average should be average whole term, okay? It's not AVG. You have to select the whole term. The average. Okay, so that's about. So, sorry, uh, I actually did the completely wrong calculation there. 
let's do it again equal ABS parentheses expected 656 654.6 minus cal average C 66 divide by 654.6 multiplied by 100 okay now it's good Copy paste the command. Any question? E -E. And from the graph, again, the same thing. Uh, slope multiply by the, uh, the D, right? Is small d. The slip separation, that is 1500 nano, right? Slope is about like 0.4758 equal point. 4758 multiplied by slip separation 1500. About right, these two numbers are the one you need to check. It is close by, we are fine. PE, you can click and drag. So if those two numbers are very further away, then we're doing completely something wrong. Okay, so that's where the problem. If you see that kind of situation, then you have to take a look carefully. Uh, this command right here we use for lambda from the graph. Okay, question. All right, so we've done the analysis for three different colors. One uh, other thing I forgot earlier to mention that every this a percentage error calculation table asking one other information here, non value that you have already on the previous table, but you can copy and paste that number there because it needed when we're doing the PE. We can get that number from the previous table. But since it is asking there on the top of the table, you can actually adjust that editing a little bit. Then it looks nice. So this is for the last table, table number six. Okay. Now, the there are various colors on the rainbow, right? We can do this analysis again and again, next color and next color and next color. And then so nothing, nothing new we're gonna learn it's going to be the same kind of process uh, because of that the we'll select a couple of other colors we don't need to go this many a few other colors and then we'll uh, calculate this for one time we know how to do the calculation let's try this one time okay just one calculation per color let's do a couple of other colors selected colors only okay you don't need to do the all of them uh, you can pick the colors I think I noted down a couple of colors on that table. Maybe we can do dark red, orange, yellow, light green, dark green, and then violet. Okay. So like about six different colors. You can pick many, many colors because you can see if I do change the frequency, I can have many, many colors, okay? Hundreds of different variation in our rainbow colors you can mix the colors to get like hundreds of thousands of different colors okay question all right then let's continue then let's pick uh, we'll we'll follow this exact proposed color here right let us start from the dark red and let's follow accordingly okay it may be easier So dark red going to be very far away here. We can go very furthest possible. That's going to be the darkest one, right? So let's do that one. So that's going to be the value may be very close to the IR radiation, okay? Because the, the if you take a look, the main uh, spectrum, EMI spectrum, the energy is decreasing after red. Red is the lowest energy or now visible region after that IR region and then so on, right? So the close to the violet is the UV, ultraviolet. So let's uh, select this one. And 
we have to measure both now, right? We have to estimate the wavelength and also we have to measure the wavelength from the fringe pattern. Okay, to estimate, I have to measure from maximum point to exact maximum point, one wave about 799.6. Technically, that means the red color can go all the way to about like 800 nanometers, right? So roughly about 800 nanometers. Now oh, let's do color here, dark red. And the position of the red bar that we can measure later. Let's do wavelength uh, non. Wavelength, we can say just non there. It's not the calculated, you can say measured, okay? Wavelength measured, non. Edit that, uh, you need to edit that little bit. It's uh, I wrote it, they are calculated, it's not calculated, the wavelength measured, known. And unit you can use the same way, we can say it's meters, but the nano, we can keep it off, right, as a common parameter, 10 to the power minus nine. So this number is gonna be 799.6, right? Now let's do that calculation by using the fringe pattern, right? So the position of the fringe pattern, that's going to be in unit meters again, 10 to the power minus nine, I can keep it common. And then let's calculate like we done earlier tables, meter 10 to the power minus nine, I can keep it common. Then we'll do percentage error between that value and the observed value, okay? And the slit separation, we still keeping 1500, right? That we need actually when we're doing the calculation into the power minus nine meters. Uh, lambda known, uh, we can't actually do one lambda known here. You can actually get rid of that, that there because we can't have one lambda because we're gonna do different colors, right? So those lambda known values, I have to do it here. And the separation between the slit and the screen, I started here when the screen, uh, when the position right here, we can leave it like that, it's okay. So the separation is about like thousand nanometers. So this number gonna be then around like thousand nanometers, which means thousand times 10 to the power minus nine meters. It doesn't matter, you can keep that anywhere you like, if you want to, doesn't matter, but we can just start from there. Okay, now let's take a look how the number is when we do that calculation from the fringe pattern. So the separation to the maximum point may be around right here, right? That's the maximum point, 672.2, position of the first bright fringe, 672.2 nano. Let's do the calculation y, uh, calculation from by using y lambda. So that's gonna be that's gonna be by using this formula right here. Lambda gonna be y times c small d over large d, right? So we done that calculation earlier. So we'll do that again, equal sign y times. You can copy paste the function if you want to from previous, okay, nothing wrong. It will do the calculation automatically or else you can, it's a simple calculation, right? Y times small d over large d, it's not big deal at all, equal sign y times, times small d, which is 1500 nano, I'm keeping the nano separately, okay? Divide by large d, which is 1000 about 1008.30, uh, little bit higher. Let's take a look the, we expecting about like 800, it's about like 200 difference. That actually little bit higher, little bit higher. Let's see what's the percentage error first. Equal sign, ABS, parentheses, expected minus, Calculated, divide by expected. Expected minus calculated, divide by expected, multiply by 100. 
about 26 and actually a little bit higher. So let's quickly take a look again whether we did anything wrong in terms of numbers. Let's take a look very quickly again to make sure the wavelength we measured is correct. That's about right. I think earlier we got 799. That's fine. That's nothing wrong. Let's take a look again. This one. And then let's compare with the graph too. It's about. Yeah, so that's there's a huge error there. See that? So that's not actually that high. That might be the error. So let me. Maybe if that number should be around like maybe seven or six. So that's the error. It's smallest difference right here because you can see midpoint. It's difficult to see, right? Because his background is black and the very dark red I'm trying to observe here. So let's try with 679.1, this one. 679.1. Still not good. Check again this little bit. Let's try with about like 640, 637 to see what we get. 637.7. That's better. It's still not good, actually. It's still about like 20 percentage error. That's okay. So we're just checking whether we can actually measure this wavelength, right? You can see, like, if we really want to understand, I think last two chapters I mentioned a few times. Uh, these actually apply to identify the astronomical object out there, what, the, how far away those things, and then so on. Various experiments you can do. You can see how much, how much the trouble, and then how much the process they have to work to make sure those measurements are accurate because the error is going to be too high. Uh, the smallest error you can you can have during the measurement is going to be huge error at the end. So that's why these uh, these technologies are actually very these measurements are very difficult. And when you apply into a different technologies, it's a very very uh, challenging process. Really. Okay, correction. I will leave it like that. It's okay. I think so to get the idea that we can still get a fairly reasonable answer, but the error is too high there. One of the reason is that the the fringe is itself. I can't really see where the midpoint is because it's too too dark. So that's one reason. So let's continue. Let's see other colors. How how it's gonna go? Any question? And make sure slit separation is still uh, fifteen hundred, and the slit and screen separation is about thousand. Okay, those are important. We should measure before before it hit the hit the slits because this is actually incoming waves. If you measure after that, it should not change at all. But I I saw earlier number is actually slightly changing if you measure after because the the way the way they produce this one you can see wavelength wave intensity is actually even changing after it hit the slit. So that's a little bit different way they're making there. And also you can see because of that intensity changes, wave shrinks down and the peak becomes very wider. So whatever you're measuring here, this side, going to be too much inaccurate. Then the, I don't know where the exact peak point is. So if I measure from there, number may be more accurate in terms of what we're measuring. But I I measure all the numbers previously also before it actually hit the slit. Okay, I'm gonna still keep it same way. So depending on how you measure it, number may be slightly different. Earlier I got about like 799.9. So I'm gonna keep it the same number. But if I use the same distance here, you can see it not maybe about the right. So the right number may be like 
around 861 maybe. On the other side, if you use that number, you will get much better error, but we'll, we'll do the consistency way like we've done for the all last few cases. Okay, so let's continue. Let's do orange and then let's, we'll, we'll see how change with the with the colors, different colors. Let's switch on the orange. Orange also you can pick a couple of different colors, okay. First pattern, uh, the first fringe we interested. Middle of that, maybe around there. So it's about 1272.8. We are on orange color. Position of the first fringe 1272.8. And then rest of the calculation we can easily do by click and drag all these are calculated values. Oh, that's too much bad. So let me check what happens here. Oh, I know, because measured wavelength is not correct. I have to measure that. So let me stop this one and then measured wavelength is actually not the red color one. Now it's different, right? So it should be smaller than that previous one. Maybe about like 599. Close to the red. Brighter red value, but it's not exactly 599. Dot four. Still not good. We are wavelength calculated also not correct. Why is that? Let, let us take a look why it is not correct. Okay, because the remember, so the, the separation between the slit and the screen I used earlier around 1000. Okay, if I change that, then I have to edit this function. Okay, I'm using 1000 there. But earlier it wasn't on that location. Okay, let me repeat that measurement because the error can't be anything more than like 20 percentages. So otherwise, it's not really anything meaningful doing it, right? So we had 20 percentage error earlier, but it definitely can't be that high. Now we can't see the fringe. We can see the fringe very clearly. Separation is now about 478.9. Make sure screen separation is fixed in this experiment. We don't need to change that. We're doing only one measurement. Uh, slit separation is fixed, 1500, okay? Then this number is about 478.9. That's why, 478.9. Now it's about the same error. So it can't be about like, 50 percentage, 100 percentage error. That's really not meaningful at all. So that you can edit a little bit if you do trial and error. You can bring this here and then take a look whether it is the exact measurement. You can see it's slightly off. If I do a little bit of adjustment, I may be able to get a better number. Since I can read, uh, see this fringe very clearly, let's try 492. the same maybe that's very weird uh, let's try a couple of more trials to see why it is four sixty five let's try four thirty seven Yeah, slightest different when I have here is actually creating huge error. So that's why so this should be exactly the midpoint. You can see it varies from about like 368, the bright region on this first fringe to about like uh, 568. So the one way is to do that, you can check. But that may be one way to do actually that measurement instead of try to go exactly midpoint, you can check what is the lowest margin value. The brightest point is starting point about like 361. And then the next point may be 575. Then you can manually check in between. 
uh, the number should be in between that, right? The lowest value 360 and then highest value 576, then the number should be in between probably the average value, okay? So that's one way is to check that. So if you do that, maybe this should be about like 530, 540, around that. Around 537, 540, even 50, uh, 450 is not bad. So that's the number I'm getting if I do that. way. That may be one way to do. Instead of try to go to the midpoint, uh, check the lowest margin number the highest margin number, and then you know then the average number, what it should be, then bring that tape measurement about the average value, and then check whether that match with the exactly midpoint of that bright region. Because we can't really identify exact midpoint unless if I measure that from here, okay? But I try to go without measuring there. Because if I try to measure from here, I can get a better answer, but instead I would like to go this way. Okay, so that's fair enough. I think it's about 12 percentage here. So let's continue. Let's take a, take a look, couple of other colors, yellow and light green, dark green and the violet. Yellow right here. Yellow also, you can go a couple of different colors, right? Many, many colors. Try to get it into the middle of the yellow exactly. Don't change the screen position and the separation between the screen and the slits. And everything should be as it is earlier. And then I just need this separation now. That's going to be very difficult to identify because yellow and orange are going to be very close to each other first. Check the wavelength of the yellow. And I see it, uh, can I measure it accurately? 585.6. That's impossible, right? Did I did any mistake earlier with the orange? I want to recheck the orange wavelength very quickly. When I did the orange, if you see the higher error margin, you can always go back and recheck quickly. Okay, it's not a big deal at all. All right, so let's continue. Let's do one quick measurement for violet color. Anywhere on the violet region doesn't matter. Let us estimate the wavelength of the violet. That should be the highest energy. So the wavelength should be very, very low because of that. Around, around maybe 413, close to 400, right? About like 392. 392.3 expected value. Pilot, and then let's check that with the measured value on our fringe pattern. Now the fringe pattern, you can see very close to each other. I can see many different fringes. So I have to get exactly midpoint right here, be around like 265.0. Let's try with that. So that's better actually. So because if the fringe pattern is much thinner, then the midpoint you can find very easily. If the fringe is much thicker, finding the midpoint is actually not easy, very difficult to find it. So that might be one reason we're getting sometime very large error earlier. Okay, question. And let me copy paste a couple of commands we use here. Lambda cal. And then we using lambda measure directly from there and also the P, P okay. That's only two commands, two different type of command we use for that table. So there's no graph or anything that table because it's different colors, right? We can't do a graph, but we can make a graph again 
let's uh, check one other graph by actually measuring slit separation instead of uh, measuring the by using the earlier we actually change in the separation between the slit and the screen now we'll fix that and then we'll change the slit separation and then we'll see uh, whether we can get the same okay we can do that for violet for example or we can go back to the green green is very you know bright color we can see the pattern very clearly that's why so let's uh, keep the slit and the uh, screen separation fix and then check whether this is changing as a function of slit separation if i go the highest to uh, to uh, to first way uh, first fringe is right here and then let's check with the maybe like 1000 nanometer level now these two around right here. I'm checking whether it's a measurable range or not because I, it has to be some measurable range, right? Otherwise it's difficult to do. I need exactly around like at least five data points. I think we can do it. So let's try with 100,000 uh, nanometer difference and 1,500 to see whether it's a measurable difference. Yep, yep, that actually good measurable range. So we can uh, start from that, yeah. Correction. Okay, let's go back to the green and then estimate that by changing the slit separation. Okay, now screen distance, we're keeping the same. This is about 1000 nanometers, 1000 times into the power minus nine. And the wavelength you have to measure directly by using the tape wavelength is about this is the green color right try to do it as accurate as possible one maximum point to a next maximum point uh, it's about like 5 523.5 523.5 times 10 to the power minus 9 meters those two good and then we are changing slit separation meter and we can keep 10 to the power minus 9 common again and the position of the first bright fringe again meters 10 to the power minus 9 common parameter again wavelength unit meters and 10 to the power minus 9 as a common parameter again, okay, because they are actually common parameters. Let's keep it common. When it is, when you do the calculation, you don't need to retype them again and get that large negative power. So 1 over D going to be then 1 over meters, right? The D is in 10 to the power negative 9. That's going to be going to the numerator 10 to the power positive 9 okay so that's going to be stay as it is 10 to the power positive 9 okay now uh, pe again like we done earlier for this case too all right so let's continue now i'm going to keep the separation between the slit and the screen about thousand nano and the slit separation will start about like 1000 nano. That's a good point to start with, I think. We can even go all the way to like maybe 500 nano. See what we get in there. Let's try with 500. We need some measurable uh, change, okay? 500 nano difficult to see. You can see this is the first one. And it's almost very uh, broad, not possible to measure. Let's try with 550. Uh, let's start with six, uh, sorry, the thousand value. That's, I think, the best value to start with. Thousand nano. Yeah, that's very nice measurable pattern. So the midpoint exactly around right here. I think that's good point 
lowest margin 444 highest margin around 713 in between maybe around like 66 uh, 561.8 let's try with that 561.8 let's do the calculation now i'm keeping the small d constant right so the formula is same so we're keeping a small d constant uh, the large d constant is small d we, we're going to be changing and then I want to calculate lambda. It's going to be the same calculation technically. Y d divided by the large d, right? Let's check that calculation. So equal sign. I record it in the wrong location. This should be 561. 561.8 should be on the y location. Slit separation is now 1000. And again, the number of decimal places, you should format this into one decimal place only. Calculated lambda equal sign y multiply by small d divide by slit separate slit and the screen separation again 1000. So I'm getting about like 561.8. So because 1000 cancels out, I'm expecting 523.5. Not bad, actually. Let's do percentage error. ABS, parentheses, expected value 523.5 minus calculated value divide by 523.5 multiply by 100. So about 7 percentage error. That's comparable to the previous study okay and also you have to record here which color we using we are using green color okay? one of the green color and i need one over d because one over d one over b 91 because actually now we are planning on making this graph okay we change in the slit separation but we keeping the other parameters fixed okay so now all you have to do change this like at a time maybe 500 nanometers and then see whether we can measure it fairly accurately now slit separation is 1500 you can see the fringe changes right into a new location see that new location midpoint 409.9 New location now. This is 1500 nano 409.9. Uh, the only way to check that actually by calculating by calculating lambda whether we have the good value or not, and also one over d. Why I did not get the right answer there. Oh, because you need actually more decimal places here because one over thousand right you have to have at least four decimal places there otherwise you're not going to see any numbers that is uh, column e okay and that error is a little bit higher than you know again what to do you can change this position to see minimum and the maximum range and then try to estimate the midpoint as accurate as possible let's try with 396 396 it's about 12 percentage i will leave it like that all you have to do increase the slit separation at the time 500 nanometers and then measure the new location of the first right fringe now it is on 2000 That's the difficult part now because the change is a little bit is smaller now, 313.3. This is now 2000 nanometers. New position is 313.3. Let's check what we're getting. So let's click and drag. Error is a little bit higher. Go back and re-estimate this. Lowest 251, highest. 389 so it should not be 330 right i don't know it's very difficult to do actually now that part that's okay let's continue
that's okay because we are more interested of the graph there right so let's try with 2500 split separation now you can see the the fringe pattern is actually almost impossible to measure it's there but the intensity is very weak now the first byte fringe right but uh, let's try to estimate as accurate as possible by using this side maybe very difficult now it's a very weak right here is the minimum 200 209 the maximum maybe 327 in between around like 258 that's the best estimation i can do let's check with that this is my next location let's check what the error is error is getting much much better much much higher actually much much bad but that's okay let's continue that and then see what will happen the next one we need only like three data points to do the graph I had exactly the 2500 earlier. Yeah, so let's try 3000. 3000, now you can see that extremely weak, almost impossible to measure, right? So only way we can measure is actually by using this. So it's about the same. It's very difficult to estimate lowest margin highest margin in between maybe like 244 that's the only best estimation i can do yeah, that's the only number we can measure maybe probably it's a slit separation the error is too high that's okay let's let's draw a graph and then see that's very difficult do you can see because intensity is almost decreasing by large and almost very impossible to measure that that region that's okay. So let's take a look at the graph and then how the graph look like and then we're done from there. Okay. So that's the last data point here. Yeah. So I can't even do the next data point, no meaning at all. Okay. And this one right here, I think you should do a little bit of higher uh, decimal places. Otherwise, it's impossible because it's one over these thousand values, not meaningful at all. Uh, that graph also i can bring the graph of the same copy of the previous graph make a copy of the previous graph right here and then we'll edit the data that makes a little bit easier to do that double click select data series one edit delete the series x values now the x value should be 1 over d 1 over d that means the values on cell e 91 to 95 and then y values gonna be y values gonna be on the first position of the fringe that is cell value c 91 to 95 so the error is higher there, okay? But let's check the, how the graph is look like. Where's the graph mine? Did I miss the previous graph? Okay, so we ask my new graph actually. Yeah, right here. So that graph actually you can see it's uh, its data is actually not good. You can see first few data points are good and then after that it actually going here and there. So we will get a huge error actually on that one. But that's okay, you still do the calculation. Okay, you still will fi we'll finish the calculation all the calculation needed, which means this, this method with this simulator is actually not a good method at all. I, I thought that we can do it, but it seems to be it's really not much meaningful doing that part. But to get some idea, you, you get some idea how this experiment can be done in various ways at least. So let's do the final calculation, okay? So the, from the graph, I can estimate and then I can check the uh, 
uh, average value from the previous okay so wavelength meters you can keep the 10 to the power minus 9 as it is equal average wavelength calculated average okay c values d91 to d95 631 PE ABS expected value is about 523 dot 5 minus cal average you can see it's a very reasonably large error 523 dot 5 523 dot 5 23.5 multiplied by 100 fairly large error that's okay so from the graph you have to take a look the equation so our, according to equation so i should get the lambda from the graph now the graph slope is lambda times d lambda is slope over large d so let's check it out that slope what we're getting 5937 593917 divided by large d which is about 1000 right so let's check that out equal sign slope of the graph 593717 593717 divided by large d about 1000 okay i'm keeping the 10 to the power 9 away it's about 593 so that error is much better actually still you can see the few data points went too far because it's very difficult to estimate the midpoint of that fringe but still even with that high error for the one data point you can see the graph average value and the graph uh, the value from the graph is actually much reasonable error is about 13 percentage not bad so but but this this method the last part is actually seems to be not good method to do at all but the the first section is fine by changing the screen location is actually much better way to observe this um question Okay, so, and also make sure the, the uh, last graph, I did not name it here. Every graph you have to name it properly, right? Figure uh, by using the figure, right? Figure terms. And I think we done everything what is needed. The All the first three sections are better. First four sections are better. But the last section, we had a little bit of error when the, when the six separation is much higher. Last table, which one for this one? Slope divided by D, okay. Table seven or eight. Yeah, let's do that too. So, um, this one which we need to include is this formula this is lambda cal lambda cal and uh, this is one over d that is nothing much to worry and the pe also nothing much to worry everybody know how to do that right and also let me include the two commands for this one then we can stop there. Okay, average, I think we don't need to do that. You know, this, let's include this command. This is lambda from the graph, okay? And the PE, everybody know how to do it. Okay, so I think let's stop from there. So that's, uh, um, if you have any correction, stay. Uh, any correction, if you have with the last two calculations, you can stay on the call, otherwise, I uh, will see you guys next week then, okay?